Your color is green. Color green. Still be there. Still be there. And you go, you come out, you go in. It will change. The will let us give I was a man. 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 I was a She was there. I will first finish with that. Very good. 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 Very Boring and 
something hid. I found a blue bead for my necklace. Look. Okay, so that is the dramatic irony. In fact, it's like the twist in the story at the end. Okay. One more. One more. It's hot. Uh, team, it's okay uh, later. Uh, now we read from here. Just go over the mic. Look at that. There only you have none of my finger. Okay. 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 So we read first up to the, because Mark first will wear this is okay. So first page is up to sunny air, then it's sunny air. Second para has put a marking over there. Then next page scroll. Scroll to you put a little bit Around him up to plenty of food. A great length. Thank you, Farah. Mark, ha, guys, it's Mark. Yeah. In red, in red, in red. Till, till page 94, first Farah. Then, great length. Next, now nothing up to gems of new gem. Where is it? Ah, then one last. Second last, Farah. Scroll. Now it was not a gem up to born to toy. Next scroll. In all her life. In all her life up to work doing. But not work this thing, magenta. That last last that last, last stage. Next. Scroll. Just scroll it using that round the there was, then there was up to fodder. Fodder, fodder, Then there was a plot stall. Okay. Is the mystery of Go up one page. Uh, she was going with her mother up to Tiger Bay. Tiger weight, other way, no, that two lines of color. Then, here they had to fly. Here, each man. Elephants. Here, they had to climb up to elephants. Very old and elephants. Next page, first para. Okay, page 29. Next, child, 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 the light of the evening child, 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 Last paragraph, second last, second last paragraph. Then from next, in the boiling water, up to para. this is the clear area. Somewhere in the middle of page 120. Then he will die. He will die to be fresh. Then there is late in the end. Okay, look
He was twice the length of a tall man, and inside him, among the stones which he had swallowed to aid digestion, aid means helps digestion. See over there, crocodiles' habit to swallow stones is helping them to digest and improve their swimming skills. So it helps them for these two things. So he had swallowed some stones. Rolled a silver bracelet. So there was a silver bracelet there, and that also was in its stomach. So basically, what we are trying to say here, say here, is that a crocodile can digest almost anything and everything. Timber was being floated. Timber is that okay? Logs of wood. Timber was being floated down this great Indian river from the forest further up. You all remember lumberjacks of yes. Canada? Yes. yes. So in that, what it was that when it's cold, the rivers are frozen. So at a height, they cut logs of wood and they place it on the rivers. Then once the water uh, starts melting, it's carried down to a particular location from where they lift these uh, logs of wood. Okay. And in between, there are chances that they get stuck somewhere. So then these lumberjacks used to go. It was a risky job where they had to go and separate those dogs, the coat that was stuck. Okay. So here it's something similar where uh, logs of wood were floated down from the forest further up from a height. And there were sleepers. Sleepers is again this only, okay, the log of wood. There were sleepers lying stuck around stones until someone came to. Dislodge them. Dislodge is to separate them and send them on their way or until the floods lifted them and jostled them along. Until the floods lifted them means when the water level increased, then it used to automatically get floated along. The crocodile had no need to hide himself. He came to rest in the glassy shallows. So, why are we referring to the water as glassy shallows? Because it looked like transparent glass. 
and it was shallow water then. Among logs, I balanced there on tiptoe on ripple sand only with his eyes raised out of the water and raised nostrils breathing the clean sunny air. So if you, you must have seen it on uh, National Geographic and all also, no? that then there is a uh, crocodile in the water, the water will be still. And you will see this crocodile, which will be hardly will be hardly noticeable also. Only its eyes will be out of the water and its nose for breathing. So you will not even be able to identify that the crocodile is there. That's how that's what it does to catch its prey, right? So when the animals come to drink water, it suddenly lunges at them. So raise nostrils and keep breathing with in case are needed. Okay, just roll next. Around him, broad sparkling water traveled between cliffs and grass and forested hill. A jungle trap came out of scrub, scrub is small bushes, each side and down to the sun whitened stepping stones. Sun whitened why? Because when the, uh, it used to dry, there used to be some amount of mud or sand on it which used to look white after it was completely dry. So that's why we are saying sun white in stepping stones. What are stepping stones? Small stones, boulders and all small, small rocks which are there which help you to cross over to the other side. Uh, sun white stepping stones on which a little fly catcher was flirting and chilling along. That little bird that you can see that's a fly catcher. They are small tiny birds. The Magar crocodile. So Magar again referring to the crocodile. We say in Hindi no Magar much. So the Magar crocodile, blackish brown above and yellowy white under. So what's the color of the crocodile? From the top it is blackish brown and below it is yellowy white in color. Lay motionless. Motionless means it's not moving. Still. Able to wait forever till food came. This antediluvian saurian, antediluvian saurian right there over, over there, ancient for antediluvian and saurian blizzard. Ancient blizzard. Hmm? This prehistoric juggernaut, juggernaut right now, extremely powerful, extremely powerful. Okay, see in that it's written, huge, powerful, overwhelming force. It's extremely, it's a very powerful force in the water. Juggernaut, ferocious and formidable. Formidable, write down over there, intense. Formidable, intense. I-N-T-E-N-S-E. -E. So here we are trying to say how powerful the crocodile was. And why this is important? Because Sibia, the girl, she fought with this crocodile and she killed him. It was a mature adult grown-up crocodile. Okay? So a vast force in the water propelled by the unimaginable and irresistible power of the huge tail. So its tail is very powerful. Propelled by means? Ferocious is the, what do you say? Ferocious is power again, powerful. What do you say for ferocious? Like the lion is ferocious. Very very powerful. Like one would get scared of such animals. Uh, vast force in the water, propelled by, propelled by means? Yes, it maneuvers itself with its tail. It moves, it, it travels with its tail. It helps it in going from one side to the other. Uh, lay, lapped by ripples, a throb in his throat. His mouth running almost the whole length of his head, right? How is the mouth of a crocodile long like this, no? So its mouth almost running the whole length of his head was closed and fixed in that evil bony smile. 
where the yellow underside came up to it, it was pitched with green. So maybe something like algae because of which it looked green. Okay, the underside of its mouth. From the day, now we are talking about how it was, uh, how it had been born and how it has survived. This, uh, how it has grown from that tiny little, it's more like a lizard when it's born, like a small lizard to that great length, how, has, how it has survived. From the day, perhaps a hundred years ago, when the sun had hatched him in a sandbank. So how old is the crocodile assumed to be? 100 years. When the sun had hatched him in a sandbank and he had broken his shell and got his head out and looked around, ready to snap at anything before he was even fully hatched because that's in their nature, okay? That they are ferocious right from the time they are small from the time they are born. From that day, when he had one at once made for the water, ready to fend for himself immediately. Ready to fend for himself means why she sits in the head down. Sit with your head up. Sit straight, back straight. Fend for yourself means? Not necessarily, yes. Defend yourself, but also at the same time, Take care of yourself. Like, that, have you ever seen a crocodile? A bird might, a mother bird might feed a baby bird. Have you seen a crocodile feeding a baby crocodile? So it has to take care of itself. So ready to fend for himself immediately, he had lived by his brainless craft and ferocity. Ferocity is again its aggressiveness, you can see. Escaping the birds of prey. The birds of prey means those birds that eat baby crocodiles. And the great carnivorous fishes that eat baby crocodiles, he had prospered, catching all the food he needed and storing it in putrid. Putrid, write down, decay. Putrid to decay. In holes in the bank. Tepid water, tepid is lukewarm. Write down over there. Tepid, lukewarm. What are you asking or everything? You're not listening or what? Nutrit, you may require of the meaning. Are you tepid? So, you drill in holes in the back, tepid water to live in, and plenty of rotted food grew him to his great length. Okay, so means it can survive on anything and everything. Then, so that's how it had grown from the time it had broken from its shell till the time it was a hundred year old crocodile. Now, nothing could, could pierce the inch thick armored hide, means its skin from outside. Hey, we should have scrolled, no? Scroll to the image. To the other one? No. Now, nothing could pierce the inch thick armored hide. Um, armored hide means its skin, on the skin on the top. Okay, it is an inch thick and nothing can go through it. It was that powerful. Why this is important is when Sibya attacked the crocodile, she attacked him straight in his eye. Okay, had she uh, attacked him on the back, it wouldn't have made it. So, nothing could pierce the inch thick armored hide. Not even rifle bullets, which would bounce from. Only the eyes and the soft underarms offered a place. So, what were the two most vulnerable parts? The lower part of it, the part that was yellowish white, where it didn't have any uh, of that uh, of its area scales, and its eyes. These were the two most sensitive parts. He lived well in the river, sunning himself, sunning again, tanning himself, right? They sit in the sun. Sunning himself sometimes with other crocodiles, muggers, as well as 
the long snouted fish eating carrions carrions were also same as crocodiles but they are uh, alligators where their nose is long their mouth is long so with a long, long snouted fish eating carrions on warm rocks and sand banks where the sun dried the clay on them white white right like we spoke first about the sun white and stepping stones so when the when they have sand on them and they are on the shore and they dry themselves then the sand looks white okay so that's why we are saying when the sun dry the clay on them white white and where they could plop off into the water in a moment if alarm so they will sit very near the water so if there is any kind of danger that they sense they immediately jump into the water the big crocodile fed mainly on fish okay now we are talking about what these and this reptile used to eat the big crocodile fed mostly on fish but also on deer and monkeys that came to drink perhaps a duck or two but sometimes here at the ford ford right down over the shallow river shallow river it is basically the shallow part of the river he fed on a pie dog pie dog right down straight off so sometimes it used to feed on a pie dog full of parasites or a skeleton cow and sometimes he went down to the burning ghats burning ghats he found the half and the ant found the half burned bodies of indians cast into the stream burning ghats are the place is the place where they burn bodies where the ashes yeah the shamshan ha it goes the ashes Yes, but then in some cases there were half burned bodies. Some of them just put it down the river. So even there, whatever kind of bones or whatever he used to find, he used to eat that also. So basically, anything and everything that it could survive on. Beside him, in the shoals, shoals right sand bank, shallow part, sand bank, shallow part. Can you repeat this? Sand bank in brackets. Can you write shallow part? So beside him in the shoals. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah, tell me. Can you see him again? Beside him in the shoals, as he lay waiting, emerged a blue gem. That's where the blue gem lies. Now, it was not a gem, though it was sand, bone, glass that had been rolling about in the river for a long time. So, what was it? Was it really a gem? It wasn't. It was sand bone glass that had been rolling over there in the river for a long time. By chance, it was perforated right through the neck of a bottle, perhaps a blue bean. You understood? So they are saying that it was perhaps you know the neck, this part of the bottle. This doesn't have too much of a neck, but then this part of the bottle, there's a hole, right? So it was like a glass, a part of the bottle which was broken. And it had been worn out in the sand. वो roll हो हो के तो sharpness उसका चला रहा था and it becomes roundish, no? So that is what it actually was. Hmm? Okay, I'm reading this para again. So be clear. Was it a gem? No, it was not a gem. So it was not a gem, though it was sand worn glass that had been rolling about in the river for a long time. By chance, it was perforated right through. Perforated means it had a hole right through it. Like how the the mala that he is wearing, it has a hole on either side, right? That's how you make the mala, right? So, and why we are talking about this perforation? Why it is important? 
in the later part you will read that Sitiya, she was so poor, she wanted a bead for herself. But what they used to do, no? they used to make uh, malas out of seeds. seeds. They live in the forest. Huh? Yes, red, scarlet colored seeds. So they had to pierce the needle through it, which they used to weave and they used to pierce it and they used to make the necklaces. But her, she was so poor, her fam the family needle had broken. And she could not afford to buy another one. That's why she couldn't afford to make that necklace for herself. Okay. So here now at the end, she finds one bead which is already perforated. So that's why imagine her excitement. Hmm? Um, okay, it was perforated right through the neck or for bottle, perhaps a blue bead. Now we talk about Sibya. In the shrill, noisy village above the fort, Fort Gavika, short shallow part of the river. Out of a mud house, the same color as the ground. Same color as the ground means it was also brown in color. Came a little girl, a thin, starveling child, starveling right down undernourished. Okay, man nourished, undernourished, whatever, it means the same. So, uh, child dressed in an earth colored rag. Okay, so old, tattered clothes. She had torn the rag in two to make a skirt and sun. Then, Sibya was eating the last of her meal, chapati wrapped around, wrapped round, a smear of green chili. Smear of green chili means. Mother Techa. You just crush it and you eat it. So, Chapati wrapped around a smear of green chili and rancid butter. Rancid right down cold, stale. Okay, so why rancid? Because here we are not talking about Amul butter which tastes good. We are talking about the white butter which doesn't have too much of a life. You must have had it at home. So this white butter, white butter is what you make at home out of the Himalaya. Yeah, hmm? So that what we make at home, it gets spoiled very fast. Even if you keep it in the fridge, it doesn't stay good. Huh? Yeah, maximum, I don't think. Now we just change it for a Anyway, coming back to this, so she was eating that and the rancid butter, and she divided this also. What she she had, she had grown the chapati. So even that chapati she broke into smaller. She divided this also to make it seem more. So means they did not even have enough food to eat so whatever she had. She used to divide it in small parts so that it feels more. And with it, showing straight white teeth. With her ebony hair, ebony right now, black or dark brown. Black slash dark brown. With her ebony hair and gray eyes and her skin of oiled brown cream, she was a happy, immature child woman. This is important underline child woman about 12 years old. As you that why we why do we refer to her as a child woman? So she is 12 years old. So that's why we refer to her as a child woman. Barefoot, of course. And often goosey cold. Goosey cold right down goosebumps. Feeling cold. Goosey goosebumps. And often goosey cold on a winter morning and drawn to toil. Toil means to hard work. To do hard work.
harvest the market. In all her life, she had never owned anything but a rag. She had never owned even one anna. One anna means how much? Twenty five paisa. What's called four anna? Four anna means one fourth of twenty five paisa. Fifty paisa was called one she had never owned even one Anna, not a price, not a pie, even by say a handful. Of blown glass beads from that small in the bazaar. It's not there, she didn't even have a penny with her. Okay? The glass beads from that stall in the bazaar, where they were five like stars, or one of the thin glass bangles that the man kept on a stick, she could use it straight up. One of the thin glass bangles that the man kept on a stick, and you could choose which color you have. So she what are, what are the things she wanted to buy? The loan, glass beads, and the bangles, the colorful bangles, which the man used to sell. He used to put it on a stick, and you could select whichever color you wanted to buy. She so which means she was a young girl, not twelve years, so she had all her. Uh, tastes and choices and all these need for all these fancy things, but she could not afford to buy anything. She knew what finally was though. She had been with her parents and brothers all through the jungle to the little town at the railhead. Railhead means near the station where there was this bazaar. The one on the top is somewhat what the bazaar looked like. And she had walked, okay? So it was not a great looking bazaar. In the village, what type of a bazaar will you find? It would be a fancy one. So, and she had she had walked through the milling people, milling right down, moving around. Moving around. There was a lot of crowd, there were a lot of people over there in the bazaar. So she walked through all the milling people and the dogs and monkeys full of fleas, the idle gossiping bargaining humanity. Gossiping bargaining humanity means people who are trying to buy something, they were bargaining, they were talking to each other, spitting beetle juice. Heard the bell of a sacred bull clonking, clonking right now, making sound. You have the bull, no, that you tie a bell around its neck and it makes that sound. As he lumped along through the dust and hubbub, hubbub, right? Chaos. Hubbub is chaos. Okay, it was very crowded and a lot of uh, fleas and uh, mosquitoes and. Uh, what else? Yeah, not really a very hygienic place to be in, but then this is something that the village people could not get. She had paused. What was Pera Oya? See the bit? Has your pencil? Do that. Hope you have me forget your life. So she had paused, amazed before the sweet meat stall. Sweet sweet meat is the niche wala, the mitai ka stall. Sweet is mitai. Uh, stall to gaze at the brilliant honey confections, a buzz with dust and flies. So, abaz, me, abaz with dust and flies, we could have fly, a lot of flies and there was dust on them. Yes, but for them it is something uh, unique. They don't get it usually and they like that. 
They smell wonderful. Okay, they smell wonderful above the smell of smells of dreams and humanity and cheap cigarettes. Okay, so even then, despite the other smell, which was not very uh, uh, tasteful, uh, this smelled good. At home, she sometimes tasted wild honey or crunched the syrup out of a stock of sugar cane. So at home, that is the only thing that she had. What? Either honey or sugar cane. Crunch the syrup out of a stock of sugar cane means you chip it on the sugar cane. But these uh, sweets were green and magenta. These sweets were nice and brightly colored. Another cloth stall. Then there was the cloth stall stacked with great rolls of new cotton cloth. Okay, now we are describing the market scene, how it was. So, then there was the cloth stall stacked with great rolls of new cotton cloth, stamped at the edge with a maker's sign of a tiger's head. Means what? Usually the stamp will be there, no? Yes. Huh? Yes, for them is something brighter. It had the sign of the symbol of the tiger's head. And smelling so wonderful of its dressing, right? New cloth smells very good. So it used to smell good straight from the, it's written front, front over there, but that should be straight from the mills. Straight front of the mills is from. Straight from the mills, that Sibia could have stood by it all day. So even the entire day, she could have stood and looked at that stall. But then there were other wonders to see. Satin sewn with real silver thread. Satin is what? Satin material. How is satin material? Very shiny, smooth and flowy. So, satin sewn with real silver thread, thin trays from Birmingham, and a sari which had got chips of looking glass embroidered into the border. Chips of looking glass is mirrors. Sari which had mirrors uh, stitched in, the, in its borders. She joined the crowd round a Kashmiri travelling merchant on his way to the bungalows. He was showing dawn colored silks that poured like cream. The silk is very flowy, creamy look and feel. And he got a little locked chest with turquoises and copals in it. These are precious stones. Turquoise, MOB, remember? Yes. Beside, best of all, a box uh, which, when you press it, a bell tinkle and a yellow woolen chick, like this one that's there, a yellow woolen chick jumped out. There was no end to the wonders of the world. But Sibya, in all her life from birth to death, was marked for her. Earlier we used the words born to toil. So here we are saying the same thing. She was marked to work, marked for work. Since she could toddle, toddle means Moving in, moving uh, with unsteady steps, like a toddler. Who's a toddler? A baby who's not able to walk properly. He's trying to walk, then he falls again, he gets up. So that's toddling. Then you will keep from there. No, so ignore the law. That's what when you are looking at me on the penal I am reading from the book, he is looking at me for the answer. Yes, 
मैं पूछने वाली हूँ आप तेरे को क्वेश्चन देता हूँ हेलो ओके सो वॉज मार्क फॉर वर्क सिंस शी कुड टॉडल शी हैड हस कॉन हस कॉन मीन्स वो कॉन का पील निकालते ना उसका छिलका Has gone and gathered sticks and put down to dry and cook and weed it. Weeding is what removing unwanted grass. Those are weeds. Hmm? Cook and weed it and carry and fetch water and cut grass or fodder. Fodder means for yes for cattle whatever grass needs to be given that's called fodder. क्लिप्स अब paper grass is that grass which they use to make paper so what they used to do they used to all go in a group up to the mountains collect paper grass come back down to their village then they used to accumulate it jab thoda zyada bhar jata tha then they used to put it in bullock carts and take it to the agent near the rail head from there the agent used to forward it to the paper mills okay, so this is what her mother and the other women used to do she was going with her mother and some other women now to cut their paper grass from the cliffs above the river when you had in a bucket you could take it down by bullock cart to the rail head rail head is again to the station and to sell it to the agent who would arrange for its dispatch to the paper mill so wo grass pe wo agent ko dete agent aage paper mills mein forward kar deta The women often toiled all day. Toiled is work, work hard all day at this work, and the agent sat on silk cushions smoking a hookah. So this tells you again about the difference in their life and the agent's life. So the agent used to even earn more, but then his life was much more luxurious compared to these other women. Such thoughts did not trouble Celia. However, As she skipped along with her sickle and homemade hay fork, yes, the sickle is that one, the U-shaped one, and the hay fork is the other one, which is the fork-shaped one. Okay, and to attack the crocodile, she had used the hay fork. Okay, so its prongs got it through its hands. So such thoughts did not trouble Celia, however, as she. Kept along with her sickle and opened a fork beside her mother. You could skip on the way out, but not on the way back. When you ate with tiredness and there was a great load to carry, what does this mean? When they used to go at that time, they could skip and go because because you are fresh at that time. They don't have anything to carry on their shoulders. So that time you can skip and go, but then on their way back they are tired. They are tired gathering all the uh, grass, and plus they had a lot of look at the amount of load that they are carrying, right? So they used to get tired. So at that time obviously you cannot skip and go. 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 Okay. Now, some of the women, some of the women were wearing necklaces made out of lal lal beaches. It's a Hindi word. Beaches are seeds. The shiny scarlet things. Scarlet is red, bright red, blood red color. Black one end that grew everywhere in the jungle. It was best to have new necklaces each year. Instead of last year's faded ones, you know those uh, red beaches, the red seeds that you put it in water, the color fades, the color runs. So that's why, as they use it, it must be getting faded. So that's why then they used to make fresh things. 
And Sylvia was making one too. So what was she making? Necklace. Necklace out of leaves. Out of the red seeds. They were actually seeds. Scarlet seeds. How nice it was going to be to hear that rattling swish round her neck. Rattling swish is the sound that the necklace would make. So she saying it would feel so good listening to it. As she crouched along with lots of necklaces, crouched right down over there, walk with swishing sound. Walk with swishing sound. That's crouched. Walk with swishing. The word swish is there in the previous. So as she crouched along with lots of necklaces, but each seed hard as stone. Okay, those seeds are very hard. Have you all seen it? Any of you? No. Those red seeds that she talked about. You know, like uh, they are covered in uh, this moon shape type of a thing. When it's dry, it falls. You open it. Like how you have some vegetable, no? Like how peas is. All the, there are some four five seeds in one. It's similar to that. It is black. And when you open it, no, it, when it dries, it falls. And when you open that entire thing, you find some four five seeds. Like that. Not. You don't live there. Scarlet thing. Okay. Ah, so each seed hard as stone had to be drilled with a red hot needle and the family needle was snapped. Family needle was broken. Okay, it had to be, the needle had to be heated and then drilled into that uh, seed. So she must wait until they could buy another. So the poor girl was not able to make her necklace because the family needle had broken. Oh, for strings and strings of glass and beads, anklets, anklets are what you wear in your feet like piles, earrings, nose rings, bangles, all the gorgeous dazzle of the bazaar. All her little golden body decorated. So even she had her balls and her aspiration, aspirations, but they could not be fulfilled because of power. Turn on it up to the but if there is a 